Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, I, I appreciate you being here today, and I, I certainly appreciate your forthcomingness and, 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 and giving us information that I think uh, that the American people want. And, you know, to me, it's you have a very difficult job right now. Um, in the past, and, and under Comey, certainly, uh, the Russian collusion narrative got out pretty heavily, and uh, that came out of the FBI with the FISA warrants and that sort of stuff, spying on General Flynn. And then the laptop issue, the Hunter Biden laptop issue, which the FBI actually had in their possession. So I have 800,000 people thereabouts that I represent, and our job is to restore trust. And so in a lot of the hearings we've had this week, they said, well, the FBI is investigating that. The FBI, every answer was the FBI is investigating. And so, uh, in some ways, it kind of landed in your lap, and I appreciate you being here. But, uh, you know, it's just, for me, the question of how does a 20-year-old acting alone get a long gun, a range finder? We know he bought a ladder. I guess he reconned here and realized he didn't need the ladder to get on top of the building, so he left it at the house. Get on a roof within 150 yards of the most, one of the most famous people in the, the world, I guess, now, and, and a former president. How does that happen? And how do we restore trust in the American people that the FBI and the DHS, who is under Mayorkas's directorate now, how do we verify and get trust back to the American people that these agencies are really working to protect the president? And, and I'm not trying to place blame specifically, but I never thought that we'd raid his house. I never dreamed that they'd raid a former president's house. I certainly never imagined that they would actually indict him. And I felt, well, they'll never find him guilty. And now we've had a threat on his life. So how do we restore trust in the government of this country and the agencies that are here that we pay and provide $3 billion a year to the Secret Service to protect some of the leading political candidates in America? That's a lot. I'm sorry. That's a lot of questions. But I'm just, I mean, I'm going to give you a little room to talk. Right. No, no. I, I, listen, I, obviously, you included a lot, as you said, in your question. And as you might imagine, I disagree fairly strongly with a number of parts of it. Uh, but sensitive to the time, I guess what I would say this, I can speak to my approach to running the FBI. Again, the FBI was not involved in the physical security of the rally. That's, you know, we come in as the investigators afterwards. And as I've said before, our investigation is an investigation of the shooter and his attack. There are separate investigations, the Inspector General of DHS and this outside independent panel that's been announced that would be looking at the Secret Service's performance. And those, I think, will be important to trust and confidence, if you will, in Secret Service. But from the FBI perspective, we can't promise that everybody's going to like the results of what we do, right? What we can promise is that we're going to do our best to do the work in the right way. That's all we can do. And so I keep telling our folks every day on this and on everything else, our focus has to be, we gotta do the work in the right way. We gotta make sure we do the work in the right way and then no matter who likes it, because everything we do, somebody doesn't like it. And, and we, it's a credibility issue at this point. Do the, do the American people trust what the FBI and the DOJ is gonna tell them? And you know, that's the thing with this, over, when I was early on, and I've only been here about three and a half, four years now, but. The, the American people was the fear of the weaponization of government. So now we have this issue. Tucker Carlson asked the president, he said, are you afraid they'll kill you? And I remember that in an interview and I thought, wow, I, I can't believe he went there, but here we are. And so as we work through this process, I think it's so important. And I think the chairman hit on this is the audio of, of the shooter. This, you, you've interviewed the sniper, the secret service sniper that took out the target. Was he waiting on a green light? What was going on, and why did, the, why did the Mr. Crooks have a chance to get off eight rounds? And we knew he was on the rooftop. I don't know for how long, but we know he was a marked target. So was he trying to get the green light, and was somebody not giving it to him? So again, the, the performance, uh, the adequacy of the performance of Secret Service will be the subject of the Inspector General investigation and this outside independent panel. What I can tell you, um, and I'm glad you asked the question because this goes to something that we, uh, that was part of an earlier exchange. Um, the, the first time that anybody from law enforcement uh, saw the subject uh, on the roof was a few minutes before the shooting. Not with a gun, they didn't, at that point, right. they didn't, right. but they, local law enforcement, a few minutes before, saw him on the roof and started radioing. Did he have a up. backpack going up the roof? Did they, well, nobody has, we haven't found anybody yet who's, who saw him 
okay. climbing up the roof. The reason we, uh, the reason why I've talked about how we think he got on the roof is that's based on forensic, uh, our evidence response to and forensic analysis uh, that we're, you know, without getting into all the details, footprints and things like that, that we can, uh, you know, fingerprints, et cetera, that we can see how he got on. But we don't have an eyewitness at the moment who saw him climbing up. So a few minutes before the shooting, uh, local law enforcement uh, saw him on the roof. Again, not, no weapon identified at that point. A few seconds before the shooting is when the law enforcement officer that I've talked about already uh, saw, is the one who was assisted by another officer who saw up on the roof, saw the shooter in a prone uh, shooting position with the gun, Turns, How long did that happen before? That was, that, that sighting, that is the first time, to my knowledge, the first time anybody from law enforcement saw him with a weapon, that is seconds before he shot at President Trump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. So did the counter sniper not see the bad guy, the shooter, until after he fired a shot? You mean until after the, the subject fired a shot? Until after the I, I don't, shooter? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that. It's possible we've already determined that, but I, I just, as I sit here right now, I don't have that, but I can, yeah. I think that's the logical next question with, with where the gentleman from Alabama's was, question was going.